All right, today we have something special. We're going to be making an iris lily. This lily is great for picking up girls. <laughs> you can uh, uh, make two, it's two separate pieces, the stem and then the iris lily itself. Um, if you want to, uh, I say the best way to pick up a girl is to actually make an origami rose, but for those who who uh, aren't at the level, start off with this. And guess what, girls do appreciate um, the time you, you put into making a flower for them. Um, I'm always still surprised that, you know, I sometimes I don't have the time to make a rose. I make an iris lily and chicks dig this. And so do guys when a girl gives it to a guy. I don't really know if how often that happens, but it does. And um, one day I'm actually going to record a story of some girl who actually caught a guy making origami for him. <laughs> but, um, but if you appreciate the art, Having a lily is just the same. So let's get started. All right, let's get started. Um, to make the um, iris lily, let's do it with a basically a eight and a half by 11 paper. Um, if you make it out of square paper, you're going to need something to sort of make the stem. I personally like making my uh, iris lilies with sort of a stem. Stem is actually just an extra set of paper. Much like the blossom you saw on my other video, um, the stem is vir made virtually identical. So we're going to use an eight and a half by 11 because the stem is actually going to be used be made by the excess of the paper. So let's get started. Um, as always, we're making a square. You take uh, this side right here and match it up with uh, this side in a triangle. Now that we have that, in, in order to uh, basically get our perfect square, we just simply have to cut off this excess right here. So remember, always flip over. Remember I said in my previous videos, never, never, and I'm just gonna beat this until everybody, never ever fold over paper. Now you're gonna do that in other origami figures, but when you're right in the beginning, if you could prevent it, prevent it. Because all little bits of, of uh, what you call it, um, excess of paper or you're off by a, you know half a degree or a millimeter of paper, it, it really matters. Because you know, you if you wanna get to the level of origami, say like, um, I don't know, like uh, origami koi, or or um, or um, crane on a dollar ring. You definitely want to be as accurate as possible. So that's sort of a lesson to you all, and this is the reason why I always repeat myself when I say uh, make origami um, as accurate as possible. And if uh, I'm just going to keep this as a good keepsake in my video right now, it's basically an origami dollar mantis. And this requires lots of patience, lots of time. I will be teaching this in uh, later uh, in later videos. This is pretty much the advanced level right here. And it's pretty cool because it has four legs, little sort of a little tail thingy, um, two pincers to eat its mates. I don't know if the males have it or not, but I know the females eat their mates with it. And of course the females are always bigger. This is actually a one, one scale because it's pretty much just as big as a real mantis. So we're going to leave this right here at the corner to, uh, watch our origami. All right. Now back at hand, remember super, super hard creases, make it easier to tear. And if you have a knife, use a knife for everyone else like myself, who doesn't have an exacto blade or a knife available, I'm going to tear. Remember, Tearing requires patience. Always remember to get that sharp crease and then pull the paper out slowly. See how I'm pulling away? Pull away. Oh, darn. There's a little bit of air right there. Oh, well. Now, we're going to leave this paper right here in the corner. And remember, we're going to come back to this and make it into a stem. Now, what we need to do is get to the water bomb base. And remember what I said before, water bomb base, pre-crease. Okay? Now, we folded this corner to this corner. Now we're going to do it the uh, opposite, the di diagonal. There we go. There we go. Now that we have these two sides, they're uh, what you call it, um, valley fold, we flip it over and then we do corner to corner. Darn, that's going to really annoy me. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to just flip this over, 
fold it. There you go. Now I don't have to see it. <laughs> Sorry. I'm a little bit perfectionist when it comes to origami. I mean, if you get to this level right here, you definitely need to be as perfect as possible. And so I wasn't really that patient with that tear, and look what happened. But if you use a knife, you get uh, tears like that happen a lot less often. There we go. Open it up, and then corner, two corners to two corners, hamburger fold. All right, and then basically bring it together and you have the water bomb base. Always, always. Um, like, we're not actually gonna go into sort of the crane base, we're actually doing different one. Now, the only thing similar to all the origami that I taught before for this iris lily is that we get to the water bomb base. Now, this is where we change it up. Um, see where the sort of the mouth opens up right here, this tip, have it facing away from you. And what you're going to do is you're going to fold this side. Notice how this side doesn't open up. Now this side right here, this side opens up. You want the side that does not open up. Again, the side that does not open up. And you're basically going to fold it towards the middle. Nope, I thought this was flat. I don't know why it doesn't seem like it's flat. I'm going to take this. I'm going to fold this up so this way you can actually see the shadow. And we're going to fold this to the middle. Not the side with the mouth. The side that can't open up. See, I'm going to do it, show you one more time. Ah. See, this, I hate tears. <laughs> See, this side right here, no. The side right here that you can't open up, yes. You're gonna fold this side towards the middle, like so. I fold this up mainly so that I can get a reference on this right here. And you're gonna do it the same to both sides and the back. And remember, I'll stress it again, not the side with the open mouth, the side that's actually that has a fold, the side that can't open. You want to fold it towards the middle. And you're going to do the exact same to the back. Now let me just put my fingers right here so you can see the shadow. Now, let's flip it over, and the exact same thing. The side, not the open side, not this side right here, the side right here. And you can use the back as sort of a reference to fold it towards the middle. You do the same to both sides. All right, now that we have that, uh, next, see this one flap, we're gonna do this one at a time and we're gonna repeat this for all other three sides. This side right here, you're gonna open it up like this. Now see the flap that's open? Basically, you're gonna pull this all the way up so it's facing you. Now see this middle part right here? We're gonna actually put our finger in between and then see how this fold right here is already a, a sort of a mountain fold and this one is sort of a valley fold going inward. We're going to reverse this fold right here and make it a mountain fold and we're going to squash down. See, have it pointed straight up and then squash down. There you go. And you should have so sort of a, a pocket, right? Oh, sorry, not my, I didn't mean to flip off the paper. But um, right here, you, um, you could basically put your finger in here. If you can put your four fingers into the pocket, then um, <laughs> you can put your four fingers into the pocket, then uh, you got it right. All right. Next, what you do is see the top part. You're actually going to fold this. Let me see so you can see the shadow. You're going to fold this to the middle line right here. And you're going to do the same to both sides. There goes one, and then there goes the other. See that? All right. Now this next one is a bit tricky. It basically, it's a bit tricky. I don't know how else to. There is a pre-creasing method, but it's basically considered a waste of time because it would take too long to do it. But what you're going to do is it's kind of like um, the crane base, except at a smaller angle. And so I'm going to basically draw you the actual folds that you're making. Notice how when these two come together, what you're basically doing is you're going to make a valley fold here and then a mountain fold between see this tip right here notice how there's that pocket and then there's that tip right there that meets the line you're actually going to make a mountain fold mountain fold is long dash short dash long dash short dash you can do the same to both sides like this and it's a bit tricky um take practice with it there's a lot of origami that's uh figures where you're going to have to do this where sort of you're pulling the paper and sort of molding it. That's what this is. There's no way to pre-crease it. You're just gonna have to sort of um, 
get practice and do it. And the more you practice, heck, hey, if you make a hundred lilies, like over and over again, folds like this shouldn't really be that difficult because it's very similar. So now that you see my little dash marks for the fold, can you even see it? Light's so bright, okay. Yeah, I guess you can. Um, basically what we're gonna do is you're going to um, pull it up like this, pinch it on both sides, and then sort of create those folds. See how I'm creating it? See, I have no frame of reference, so it's just a matter of pinching it so that this line right here actually instantly gets created and you want to do it to both sides and sort of press down on it. And um, through practice, you get this tip. See, right now I didn't do it so well because of the the pencil tip. I actually followed the pencil tip by accident. And I mean, look, even my pencil tip um, writings is a little bit off, but you want to get it so that this, the, these two converge at a point and that there's no gap at the tip. Once you have it uh, going down, you actually want to point it back up. See? When you fold it, when you bring the paper outward, like here, let me open it up again. Open it up, and then you pull this outward like that, and then pull it down. This tip is facing down. You actually want to face it outward like that. Now that you have that, um, what you're going to do is you're going to flip one side over. Let's start with the left for all of us Republicans. Wait, did I get that wrong? Oh, whatever, Democratic, whatever. Okay, fold it over. Now, um, the side that's facing you, remember the triangle tip, see this tip? It's facing outward. The side that right here, this side right here that's facing towards me, move this pencil out of the way, um, is facing me. You want to actually slim that angle down and fold it inward towards the middle. Like that. All right, and then fold it back over. And then you're going to do the exact same to the opposite side. This side right here. All right. Now, you're going to do this exact same step three other times. So we're going to just fold this over and then see this side right here? We're going to do the exact same. So I'll just go through it with you and uh, sort of tell you a story as I do this. Um, the iris lily is one of my earlier flowers that I made. Um, I didn't read it in a book. I basically um, observed a guy making it for a couple of girls and they loved it. Except I thought they, his flowers were lacking in something and what they, he needed was sort of the stem. And then later on, um, years later, I sort of came up, when I was making my origami roses, I sort of came up with the idea of, hey, why don't I use the excess of the paper to make a stem? Because um, there's another artist who literally took money origami and literally turned them into straws. And with the straws, what he did was he, he made the straws really strong and he would basically twist it up like I showed you in the other video and then just notch notch the, the tip. And then when you notch the tip, the straws actually retain their strength. And I thought, oh my gosh, I could use the same method to create flower stems. And from then on, I just sort of um, did that. All right, did one side, still got two more. Remember, same process. Uh, open up the flap. I think I'll go over it one more time with you and then go into another anecdote. Ugh, see, I hate these tears. Can't, can't really have a hard time getting in the middle of it. Remember, flap goes all the way up, put your finger in between it, open it up, and then squash down. Now once you have it squashed down, uh, take this tip, fold it towards the middle, and you repeat on both sides. All right. Now that you've done that, see this part right here? You're going to pull this tip. You're going to pull this part outward. And remember, you're going to form a triangle. So there's no real way of, uh, see how I'm doing it with my thumbs? I just I just kind of do that and uh, it takes practice. I mean, you can probably draw geometrically, but this is one of those, and you're going to see this in the origami world where you have to just pull something out and then just sort of shape the paper until it actually makes the shape that you want it to make. And then remember, fold the tip upward. Fold one flap back, fold it over, do the exact same on the opposite side. Personally, I don't really like bugs. They creep me out when they're on me, but I love it when I make origami bugs because they look so, so cool and so realistic. And if, if, I didn't know that this was a money origami. It would freak me out that it's on the table with me. I mean, I'm not really afraid of bugs or anything like that. It's just that, you know, um, thinking about like bugs and where they've been and stuff like that. But the fact that this is money origami, I'm okay with it. <laughs> 
All right. And then next, we're going to do the very, very last one. The thing about um, using origami to pick up girls is that um, making the origami is a great conversation opener. Um, the best pickup in line in the world doesn't involve origami. It doesn't even involve the correct lines. It simply involves confidence. Um, I've had people suggest to me the lamest lines in the world, and I would go out and actually try to pick up a girl with it. And, uh, you know, my rate, rate of success varies, mainly because, you know, if a girl's attracted to you, it doesn't matter what you say. But you can make a girl attracted to you by your confidence. Now, if a girl's taken, nothing you can really do. And if she is taken, stay away. <laughs> it's kind of messed up. But um, I like to use origami as sort of a, a pickup thing because it sort of just, you know, it opens the, the um, it sets the stage. I mean, my friends encouraged me to use it as a pickup line. I personally didn't want to because I had this, you know, warped sense of belief that origami is a talent that, uh, and I want, that I have, that I know I have. But at the same time, it's like I want girls to like me for who I am. But who I am is represented by my talents. And so I started using it more often. Except I don't really use, you know, the lilies or the blossoms to pick up girls. I actually use some of my more advanced stuff to pick up the girls. Because um, my advanced origami, it's pretty shway. <laughs> okay. Now that we've formed it up, um, there's two methods to making the petal. Now, there's the uh, simple method. If you do not have something to curl the petals with, simply folding it down works just as well. So I'm just going to actually show you what it looks like with all the petals folded down. See? Like that. You fold this front down, you fold this one down, and then you fold this one down. And there it is. Your iris lily is done. I don't like that. I want more pizzazz. And here's another thing. The more detail you put into your origami, or if you aspire to getting like really epic flowers that you make for a girl, the more they like it. But do not underestimate this lily because most girls who don't see origami, they appreciate the effort that you take to go, uh, to go to make this for them. I mean, everyone knows how important time is, and origami is such a symbol of the time that you put into it. I mean, you put a lot of time into your flowers, you're going to make a beautiful flower. So I always recommend curling the petals. Look at how that looks. So much better. Now I'm going to do the opposite side. Curl the petals. Ta-da! Doesn't that look already that much better? And then the last two. Bloop! And then the last one. And there it is. Well, the problem with it is my darn crease right there actually made it go down, but there you go. There it is. Iris Lily. Now, we're going to make the step. Now, to put the stem in the middle of this one, I say use a scissor. Now, theoretically, if you don't have time, you can actually just pinch the side and tear it. Eh, tearing may be a bit difficult, but for the sake of our, uh, our diagram, we're just going to cut it. And I'm just going to cut it a little bit. And then whatever remains, I want to let the, the tear just open itself up like that. So I use a scissor, cut, a tip, cut the tip, very, very light tip. You saw it fly away. And then uh, we'll create the, uh, the stem. And then just like before, we simply twist the paper at an angle. You don't want to twist the paper like this because uh, when you play twister paper like this, nothing keeps it in place, nothing keeps it from opening. You want to do it at an angle. No, the battery ran out. Oh. My apologies, the camera had some technical difficulties, but uh, this thing will just edit clip back into itself anyways. All right, then remember, you want to fold this at angles, at sort of a, an angle. Not a 45, but as close to um, maybe 89 degrees would be perfect, to tell you the truth. So what I do is I just fold this lip right here, and start twisting away. Twist away. Twist away. You do the same, and uh, not the same, but uh, twist away, and then try to get as small as possible. I always create that fold at the very beginning because it just gives me a starting base. 
and then notice how I my fingers I pull back only because I want to get it as as uh, an angle going this way as possible you know your, your angle when you twist it it wants to sort of go into a 45 try to prevent it from going to the 45 because the more uh, angle you have the less um, the longer your stem can be so what I do is when I get to this point right here where I actually have a tip I twist and pull twist and pull twist and pull There you go, twist and pull. And then at the very tip right here, I go a little bit above this little tip. Now this tip right here is actually, the reason why we fold it at an angle, see how we see, if you can actually see it, there are spirals going around it. The reason why you want to roll the paper at an angle is because, see this tip right here? This is where the point at where it unravels. See, I'm just gonna unravel a little bit. Now, you could use a piece of tape and tape it right there and it will hold it in place but if you don't hold it in place look what happens I let go and then the paper starts to unravel so I'm just gonna twist it oops and go back and twist it to make it as tight as possible and remember this takes practice what you want to do is at this point right here pinch it once you pinch it and fold it down look the straw stays stiff and there you go now you have your straw and then now all you have to do is just insert it into the lily and then pull down all the way down oops that little tip thing Ooh. and there you have it your little iris lily is it pretty cool? Well, um, whoever you make it for, I hope they enjoy it. If you're making it for a wedding, even better. If uh, you're making it for a girl, good luck. If you're making it for a guy, good luck. <laughs> um, this is the Origami Iris Lily. Now, I'm probably going to show you in my next video how to make another special type of lily where sort of the little, see these little things right here at the teeth? I can actually, you can actually make a version where the petals are much bigger and these little teeth thingies are not in it. I think, I don't know if it's called a lily or an iris lily, but in the next one I'm going to show you how to make a lily and it's very similar to this. Alright, um, I hope you have fun with it and uh, remember, fold to paper, fold to life. Enjoy. Yoink! <laughs>